Hi, I'm Shannon. This is my husband, Dave. And for three years, we've been camping in our RPOD 180 travel trailer. While it took us on countless adventures, leaving us with long lasting memories, we were growing a little tired of the towing process. When we started to shop around for another RV, we decided to document our journey. For our very first video, we're gonna take you through our process of selecting our next camper and the wild adventure it took us on to actually get one. This is the way we did it. When we arrive to a campsite, it takes roughly 30 minutes to set up the R-Pod, and then another 30 to pack it all up again. Not to mention the sheer length of it on the road. Now I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but when it comes to camping, we are a bit nomadic. We like to move around from campsite to campsite, so a travel trailer wasn't really working for us anymore. We needed something with an easier setup to give us a little more freedom. When Dave and I started looking at other RV options, we really liked the idea of a truck camper. They all have similar features as the R-Pod, but seemed much more maneuverable. But before we took the plunge and bought one, we rented one. This is a Lance 650 truck camper sitting on top of a Ford F-150. Since we've been camping for years, we weren't too worried about its functionality as a camper. The purpose of this rental was to see how it drove. We read about trucks feeling sluggish with having such a heavy object in the bed along with side-to-side -side body roll. So we wanted to test one out for ourselves to determine whether it was a better fit than the R-Pod. And we thought the perfect test was to take it up to the Rocky Mountains just outside of our hometown of Boulder, Colorado. One of the first perks of the truck camper was being able to park it downtown and grab breakfast. This was never possible towing the R-Pod. When we reached Estes Park, the first thing we noticed was how little gas we used to get there. Towing the R-Pod, we were down at least a quarter of a tank before reaching the campground. It was now time to put the camper through its paces. We drove it through heavy traffic, on washboard dirt roads, climbed to higher elevations in the national park, in a brief rainstorm, down a steep canyon, parked along a wooded trailhead for lunch, and on the highway, through construction, I might add, back home. The consensus? We loved it. It was smooth, capable, maneuverable. There were even times we forgot we were carrying a giant camper in the back. Okay, so after our road test yesterday, the plan today was to actually go and see the Lance Camper in person. It turns out the closest one is located in Grand Junction, which is four hours away. So we're going on a road trip. Yes, you heard that correctly. We were driving four hours from our home in Boulder out to Grand Junction, which is practically in Utah, for a 10 minute peek inside a camper. That was already sold. But Dave and I really wanted to do our due diligence and see the actual camper model we were considering to buy in person. And believe it or not, this was the closest dealership that had one. But we weren't too mad about the drive because as you can see, it's pretty dang beautiful. We stopped for lunch in Vail and actually saw a Lance truck camper in the parking lot, which we took as a good omen. As the landscape began to change from alpine mountains to a rocky canyon and desert terrain, 
we knew we were close. And here it is, a 2021 Lance 825 truck camper. It's the next size up from the one we rented the day before. It's four seasons, which in Colorado means we can camp a little later into the year. And we liked how the hookups and storage were on the same side. A big factor that drew us to Lance was how modern the interior looks. Rather than the usual array of beige and browns, it had more of a gray tone with faux marble countertops and a royal blue accent color. It has a queen size bed, a large closet by the door, an open kitchen with good prep space, a microwave, bent hood, and a deep storage compartment. And this is why we are considering the larger model size. It comes with a bigger wet bath. Just for comparison, here's the wet bath in the 650. We knew we'd be downsizing from a dry bath in our R-Pod, but felt the 650 was just a little too small. Overall, the camper felt cozy and comfortable, and a perfect size for what we truly wanted to get out of camping. Feeling good about the camper, we started the journey back home. As you can probably tell, we are still not home. Uh, while we were looking at the camper, a mudslide closed the highway in both directions, forcing us to take a four hour detour on top of the four hours that it was gonna take to get home. Uh, so we thought the safest thing to do was to split up the drive and stay in a hotel for the night. During our brief visit at the dealership, the rain that we had driven through caused a massive mudslide through a burn scar from last year's Grizzly Creek wildfire, shutting down the entire highway. I-70 is the only thoroughfare through the mountains, and because this little section of the road was closed, we had to drive two hours north to the town of Craig, then back south another two hours to Vail, where we decided to stay for the night. But again, it's Colorado, where every road is a scenic drive. Until the sun went down and we were driving in complete darkness. Needless to say, by the time we arrived to the hotel, we were exhausted. After getting some much needed sleep, we drove the last two hours back home. And immediately started making plans for our future truck camper. Next time on The Way We Did It. We'll take you through our process of finding the right truck for a truck camper, along with saying goodbye to our R-Pod and revealing which truck we went with. If you'd like to join us on more adventures, be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button, or consider joining our Patreon community so we can continue to show you the way we did it.